Hello, this is the Just Because Buzz, Thread Tales number 17. Today is Friday, May 7th, 2021. I'm Merritt Crawford. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to talk about cross-stitching, quilting, wool applique, some birthday gifts, and haul, and I will share a recipe at the end and some words of encouragement at the end. So I hope you'll stick around. I hope you'll find some inspiration and just some enjoyment from, for your day. So today, um, as far as news, uh, we are still continuing the hashtag Strawberry Pickin 21 Sal with Kathleen over at Situation Normal. So if you're stitching things with strawberries on it, you can still use the hashtag. And uh, Jeanette and Heather are still using the Strawberry Social hashtag, as well as adding a new one called the Star Spangle hashtag, um, our Star Spangle Social hashtag. So um, I hope you'll join in with those. And if you need to know more about uh, the Star Spangle social hashtag, you'll go over to uh, Jeanette and Heather's channel to check them out. Um, they are Crafty Cottage Stitches. So I think you'll enjoy them if you haven't already visited. Some other floss tubers that I've enjoyed this week is the Proper Stitcher. Annie, she's fairly new to floss tube but very enjoyable and fun to watch. And then Lisa over at Prims on Greenway. She's posted a couple recent videos. One was, I believe yesterday, that she did a shop tour of one of her favorite shops up in New York. And it was fabulous. Oh, it is a destination shop for sure to put on your wish list. So thanks Lisa for sharing that. It was really fun to see all the beautiful inspiration that the old tattered flag had to offer. So. I hope you'll go by and check out that video. Lisa did a great job. Other news, I started my Maybe Mania 21 hashtag, and that was just my version of Stitch Mania, where I start one stitching project that has a bee in it on each Saturday in the month of May. And also, I'm doing one on Mother's Day with Anne over at Busy B 50, or Busy Bee 65. And so um, we're going to start one um, that I'll share with you in just a few moments um, that I think you'll enjoy. Um, if, you, if you have it, you can stitch along with us. And if you have anything that you're stitching along bees, use that hashtag. I'll put it below in my show notes. So as with most of my videos, I do like to start with a fully finished object of either mine that's been from the past or from a stitchy friend. And as you can see, I have a little friend with me today. And this is my queen bee that was made by a dear friend of mine. You've heard me talk about my Enterprise Quilting Guild that I used to be a part of down in Enterprise, Alabama. These ladies are very, very special. And it's just, I can't describe how special they are to me. And I'm going to try to get through this without crying because this has been a video that I've kind of put off because we lost one this week. All right, so the Queen Bee was made by Sandy Fico, and actually Sandy passed away when I was still living in Alabama. She was handmade by Sandy. The workmanship in this doll is just fabulous. And um, she did her face, she did her arms, she did her legs. And she's on a big um, doll stand. And she's in my um, closing video on my um, floss tube that you may have noticed before. But she has a crown. She has her scepter. And she's just beautiful. And she's a treasure of mine. So Sandy was such a special lady. And... She was very gifted in creating uh, these type of um, projects. She also cross-stitched. Um, she was such a generous lady. She gifted me a lot of her cross-stitch things. And she liked to do wool applique. So we just had a lot in common. One of her wool applique things applies to strawberries that I have in my stash. And it's this little uh, pin cushion. You could use it as a pin cushion. It's just a little cupcake with icing and then this 
beautiful strawberry that she made and the pretty little beading. So these are treasures from Sandy. Um, one of the reasons that I teared up um, is our Enterprise Quilting Guild lost their president this week. Her name was Janet, and Janet was just a special lady in my life as well. And she was a strong Christian lady, and just had a special bond with her over quilting, um, mainly over the Lord, being Christians. Um, but she loved to quilt. She loved to garden. She loved to uh, ride horses, uh, raise goats. Um, she and her husband had a farm out in Ino area of Alabama and just um, a sweetheart. And uh, I just I'm heartbroken that she passed away this week and um, it's hard to lose our quilty friends and our stitching buddies um, but God is sovereign and he knows what's best and um, we will stitch on and one day I'll get to see her again all right so now I'm gonna move on to my new fully finished objects that I have. So let's see. I'm going to try to leave Miss Queen Bee here just to be my little friend today. Um, so Spoonful of Sugar. I don't know if you've ever seen her. Um, let's see. Her little um, blog. Um, she does some pretty little stitching things. And one of the things that um, she posted was about making little trays out of hexagons and so I made three of these this week and this is about um, maybe a five inch across hexagon and then you layer two pieces of fabric with some batting and so all the way around leaving a, about a half inch and a half inch opening and then you turn it and then you do an eighth of an inch top stitch all the way around and then you pinch those hexagon corners to make the little tray. And I just use some matching floss. Let's see if it'll focus. Um, some matching floss to pinch the corners. And you can just use it as a little work tray, or you can use it for buttons in your sewing room, or just any little trinkets, rings. It could be for jewelry, so you can make it for graduation or. Um, uh, dorm room gifts and this is just some scraps of blackbird fabric that I had the inside you can see the the bird there and then the outside so that was really fun and this is a spoonful of sugar and I'll be sure to try to link all of um, any kind of tutorial that I might have used below okay the next thing is a project that I did out of the spring Punch Needle and Primitive Stitching Magazine, and I did the sampling of spring piece. It's a cross stitch piece. And I'll show you that it's a little bit better here. And this was my birthday star, and my friend Louise started it with me, and she's already finished and finished hers as well. And I did use um, some of the called for colors and then some of them I switched out myself. So I will show you. I finished it on the top of this little box that I got at Hobby Lobby and it's got um, some cording around it that matches the carrots. And this little box just flips open. And if you need to know, it was a spring, so I don't know if it's still available, but it was a spring. And there's the tag on the back if you wanted to know what that was. And I don't know if it's not focusing. Anyway, um, 5387964 if that's something you're interested in. But I thought it was just so cute. I did switch out the tulips on the bottom and used a Carolina Cecil Weeks Dye Works color on the bottom because I wanted a little bit of 
some kind of little pinky red in there. But um, this was really a fun stitch. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I believe this is on a 36 count. Those white guard linen that I just had in my stash. So, sampling of spring in the most current spring issue of the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. So it was fun. It's a quick stitch. I like those fun, quick stitches. All right. So Louise sent me a little bit of a birthday um, package, and um, I'll share some of that throughout the video. But she sent us, she sent me a kitted project for us to work on together. On Fridays, most Fridays, we stitch together in the mornings. She's in Alabama and I'm here in Ohio. And we get on FaceTime and then we stitch together. And sometimes we stitch whatever we're working on, like old Tannenbaum. She encourages me to work on old Tannenbaum. And then sometimes we stitch something we're working on together, like we've done the Farm Girl Vintage uh, blocks all last summer. But this time she get, sent me a little kit from an Annie's catalog that we had both, actually a magazine that we had both bought in April of 2017. And um, it's just a fun magazine. We've loved several projects out of it. Um, we've done a wall hanging that I believe is in my exit video on my, um, on my videos here uh, that's flowers that coming out of a spool. And we did that a year ago, February, together at her house. And so to this time, we did these pot holders that were yo-yos. And she sent me a full kit of enough to do both pot holders. And so this is one of the pot holders. So much fun. We had a blast doing this together. There's the back of it. I quilted it myself. And then... Then the binding, it's got a little hanger here at the top. So, super cute. And then this one. So, use some decorative stitches from my sewing machine for the center of the um, leaves and also for the little stems that's played around. Sometimes we don't use those decorative stitches very much, so it was fun to just use those this time. And that is an Annie's magazine from April of 2017, I believe. Um, I'll link it below if I can find a link for it. Um, like I said, her the magazines are really great. And if you can find a magazine where you can do more than one project, then that's, that's really um, a great investment. Um, because patterns tend to be $8 and $10 each, depending if you're buying the paper pattern or not. Sometimes the PDFs are a little bit less, but anyway. Okay, so the Strawberry Project bag I have is something I finished, and uh, I gifted it, so I'll try to stick a picture here of it, and hopefully its recipient, I know she watches, hopefully she'll have received it before she watches. So Ann, if you haven't picked up your gift yet, I just kind of spoiled it for you, but you can turn away if you want to not see it yet. Anyway, and then I forgot something, so I'm going to have to run go get it real quick. Hold on. Okay. Sorry about that. I had to run back to my little room. Well, this is my pride and joy for this particular video. It is Mighty Acorn from the book Winds of Autumn, Blackbird Design. And I went down to the craft gallery last Friday and picked it up. Miss Paula had framed it for me and I am so excited. She did a fabulous job. I've heard Teresa Kogut talk about Miss Paula and her framing things for Teresa. And Teresa even showed something just recently with her new May releases that Miss Paula had framed for her and it's gorgeous and I am equally as pleased. Um, so this is Mighty Acorn and I did change the house color. It is Old Money by Classic Color Works and I did change the door color just to match the windows because it looked more like what my door would look like if you came to visit. 
So I am super excited to have this and to hang it up in my home. I haven't hung it up yet because I wanted to show you all. So I hear a lot of people wanting to stitch it and some people already stitched it. Some people are already finished with it as well. Um, but this will probably just hang up year round. It's, it's just fabulous. I love it. So thank you, Miss Paula. Thank you, Craft Gallery. Uh, they also helped me pick the fabric. This is Picture This Plus Fog. It is 36 count. It's stitched one thread over two. And um, it's all the call for colors with the exception of the house and the door. So, all right. Enjoy. I do. I hope I hope y'all are do it and you'll you'll show me yours. I just I just think it's a wonderful, wonderful book. And I hope to stitch more out of it. I know a lot of people have said they don't they just want to stitch everything in it and I kind of feel the same way. All right, I did finish one piece that's not fully finished, and this is from the uh, Country Cottage Needleworks. It is the April design for the April sampler. And this is it. So I've got that finished and ready to finish, fully finish. So I have four of these already fully finished. And I just have not done it yet. I'm a little intimidated, but I'm going to do it. Um, I have an idea, and it's the same one. It's using the recipe book holder. I just need to do it. Pick my fabrics and get going. So, yeah. And I already have the, the May one. And the exciting thing about the May is it's got bees on it and I don't know if that's focusing or not but anyway it's pretty exciting how appropriate for my stitching and then the June one has already been shipped to me as well and it looks really cute it looks like it's picnics and ants and picnic baskets and just very cute doesn't look like it's focusing very well for me today. I'm not sure why. And I did want to go back and share something with you all about this finish with the sampling of spring. Um, when I did this, I um, used a product that you're probably familiar with but it's a roll of stitchery tape. And that's what I wound up using to stick my fabric here on the back, to stick this piece on to, to this piece instead of glue. Now I did use glue to put my um, cording on, but I wanted to try the stitchery tape and I'll show you the label to that as well. And I really liked using that stitchery tape because it wasn't as messy. So if you're kind of messy with glue, it might be a good option for you. This is the label. And a lot of you may be really familiar with it already. Um, but it's one and a half inches wide and you get 60 feet. So this was the first time I had used it. So it was, it was, I was pleased with it. So I'll do it again. All right. So I wanted to share with you some whips and so those are works in progress, and the first one is the Blackbird Design Giving Thanks map. And I'll use this piece of paper to. So I'm getting there. I've got most of the tea done and all of the rest of the letters done and I'm working on the vine so it's coming along and this is a piece of fabric that I dyed myself it is a it was a Joblin ivory it's 28 count I'm using one thread over two It's a very enjoyable stitch. So another fall one, but I'm just kind of going slower on it than I did on the Mighty Acorn. I have to stitch on it up here 
in the morning when it's bright and sunny and I can feed that black fabric. And the next one is also a Blackbird design. And this is one I started for the Strawberry Pickin' 21 Sal with Kathleen, like I mentioned before. And it's the Bee Scat out of the Agnes Platt Summer Sam uh, Strawberry Sampler book. And this is the full book. And then there's another picture of it. I did show a progress picture on Instagram recently that I'm going to show you again. I'm sorry for that big crease. I didn't have time to iron today. But I've got the roof completed, so I'm ready to go down and work on the house. So I've really been enjoying it, and I've seen other people start this one. So Nikki's Noodle starting it, and Mama Loves You GB is supposed to start it. And so it's going to be fun to see everybody's work working on this one. And I picked it up and worked on it this past weekend when we were doing the Blackbird Weekend Sal with Brenda and Laura. All right. Next one is what I started last Saturday for my Maybe Mania 21 hashtag. And so it's the Black Sheep Sampler by Elizabeth's Designs. And it's got the bee scap and bees there in the center, but it's got some other wonderful motifs, including that black sheep. And progress on it. I do have my needle in there. I left it in there. Let's see. I could kind of move it out of the way. So this is stitched on 36 count flax Edinburgh linen that I got from 123 Stitch. And I'm stitching one over two for the cross stitch. Some of it, it'll tell it tell you to do two threads uh, depending on what stitch you're doing. The B skip is a satin stitch. And this flower is also a satin stitch. And then Algerian eyelet. And when I finish the rest of that outside, then all of those will have Algerian eyelets in there. So I got, made some good progress on it this week. And I'm using all the called for DMC threads. So again, this is the pattern. This was a pattern I found in an estate sale, and I was just really thrilled to get it. And then the unfinished sampler. This is my red work project. And this is something that Mama Loves You GB Michelle put out for us that we would print off. She gave us um, the ability to print off the pattern and then we would add to it. So, so far, what I have done is I have completed all the ABCs, Oops. all the ABCs, and I extended the line all the way across, and I've done all the border out. So I'm ready to choose what motifs I want to go in that bottom section and maybe to the um, side of the rest of the alphabet there. So, and I'm using a scrap piece of linen. I think it's an antique white. And the color I'm using is the Weeks Cayenne. That's what I'm using for the red. So I had been using one thread, not like putting in one thread a night of this. And I kind of got stopped because I haven't figured out exactly what motifs I want to put in the bottom of it. So I need to get back and kind of figure that out and get this one finished. Um, but I did. I have been enjoying it. It's really fun to do a red sampler because it's just that one thread and you don't have to think too much about changing. So that's been fun. All right, so plans. Well, Louise, my friend's name is really Wanda, but we call each other Louise in case you're new here. Um, you'll see her comment below sometimes, most times. 
And so if it gets confusing, it for some reason it's it got started. I don't really remember all the circumstances, but it's just a fun a fun thing. So anyway, when I refer to her as Louise and she refers to me as Louise, it gets a little confusing to people that don't know. So anyway, she wants me to jump on the bandwagon and stitch Prairie Schooler Santas. She has been stitching them for a long time. She doesn't have them all stitched, but she's well ahead of me. And I have found, I had found four of the charts at an estate sale, the same one I found as um, the Black Sheep Sampler. And so, and those are ones that she does not have, so that's kind of exciting that we can um, share, but... Anyway, so she has asked that I start the preschooler Santas. So I'll show you which one I'm going to start with her. I'm going to house them in my uh, Precious Moments bag, which came out probably pretty close to that same time that these were all started in 1984. And I kind of um, decided to change up the colors a little bit. I hope that hope that doesn't upset some people. And I'm trying to use what's in stash, which is um, kind of a, um, I don't know, natural looking linen. And uh, I'm going to use a brighter red and green um, just, just because um, it would match my decor a little bit better. So that is my plan, and so I'll be starting these soon with Louise, and uh, start knocking these out. I think there's 30 of them or so. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't done the math. Probably more than 30. Okay, so let's see. So I need to show you what is on the plan for tomorrow as far as Maybe Mania 21. So the next chart that I will choose to stitch for tomorrow, when, what is on the plan, is a little chart I've already done before, but I wanted to do one for myself, and it's a Lizzie Kate Summer Basket. So that will be next. And I chose to put some smalls in here so maybe I would be able to finish them quickly and then get back to some of the larger pieces and um, not have so many whips when I get done with May. So I'm just going to use, a, a, again, a piece of antique linen that I had in my stash. And I did buy one thread color that I'm going to use um, that's called for, and that's this week's begonia. I just thought it was so pretty, and it is mainly in the alphabet here. And it's the strawberries. So this also counts as the strawberry um, pick and sal and then my bee mania sal. So I'm excited to start that again. And then on Sunday, my friend Ann, we had, I had mentioned her earlier, we're going to start the Humble Bee. This is their latest from the Scissor Tail Designs. And we're going to start the Humble Bee here. And I'm excited about starting that with her. And I'm going to use a Lugana Ivory, and it is a 32 count. And the thread colors are basically, I'm going to follow what's in there. Um, it would be the purple there, and then that, the green, yeah, it's, those basic colors right there. <clears throat> so that'll be my next two starts for maybe Mania 21. And this is the adorable bag that my friend Wanda made for me for my birthday. So it's a vinyl bag. It's got the honeycomb. Hey, Rachel Q, does this look familiar to you, these fabrics? Rachel got a pack of these fabrics from Tuesday morning, and that's where Wanda got these too. You can find fabrics all over the place, huh? So anyway, love this bag, Louise. Thank you so much. All right, then old Tannenbaum. So I figure if I tell you that I'm going to have something completed, then you're all going to hold me accountable, along with 
Wanda, aka Louise's encouragement. So, um, my plan is to have the rest of the borders done, all of it completely done as far as pieced and the borders are on, and then to have the applique tree in the center. So, I did put one border up here at the top, the blue border. Um, I'm struggling a little bit with it fitting correctly. And when we talked last time about Otana Balm, I was concerned about um, having enough blue fabric. So we're going to see. Um, Wanda did send me some more blue fabric. Another friend from Enterprise sent me some that she had in her stash. And we'll see. Hopefully it will make it. There may be some piecing going on. So that's okay. And then my French Roses quilt, it used to be on the board behind me when I did my videos back in the fall. And it's been laying on the floor, partially pinned, ready to quilt. It's one that I can just um, quilt myself. And so I want to get that where I've got it finished. So by next video, those are some accountability I'm hoping to make. So, I wanted to share that with you. So, now I'm going to move on to haul. I have quite a bit because I was treated so kindly for my birthday. And I had a birthday back in April, mid-April. I'm a tax baby. And it was just um, a, such a blessing. So, if you don't mind, I'll share some things from my haul. And it's really, it's kind of a combination of stitchy kindness, too. So, so I'll continue with Louise. Louise sent me uh, some cute little bee fabrics. And this fabric is really fun because it's got cross stitch on it. Some of you have probably seen this fabric. So it looks like sampler letters and motifs. So that's a lot of fun. And then Louise made a project bag out of this, and this looks like feed sack cloth. And she sent me a piece of this. So it's really, it's really neat. All right, so I'm gonna find a place to put things here. All right, so my sweet friend Janan for my birthday sent me this beautiful card that she made. Beautiful Janan, thank you. And by the way, Janan has a new Instagram, and it, she has her regular account, and then she has her um, business one, and it's Vintage Blossoms, and I hope you'll go take a look. I'm going to link her below. Um, she has some really neat patterns, too, right now, but I know she has more up her sleeve. So go visit Janan and um, look at her patterns. I think you'll really enjoy them. They're, they're really really good. And then Janan also gave me this cute little fat quarter with the bees on it and the raspberries. Oh my god, goodness, those are so cute. And this cute little pattern. So in love mug mat. Isn't that adorable? Oh, I just love that. Thank you, Janan. So sweet. And then my daughter gave me this was one I really wanted was Heartstring Samplery, Consider the Lilies. And it's a big girl. And I'm not sure when I'm going to start it, but it is one that I really um, like the sentiment. And um, I think it just means a lot to me. And uh, I think the chart is really beautiful. And I love all the motifs. And I've seen many people stitching on it, so I do want to add it when I finish some of my other things. And then she also gave me this one. And I'm going to plan on starting it Memorial Day in Rachel Q. I will start with, I'll stitch with you if you're still stitching it. If not, I'll plan to stitch it on Memorial Day. So this is by Calico Confectionery. And I just thought it was really sweet. It uses DMC threads. So 
um, like that idea. And it's just beautiful. I love the lettering. And then I also received a gift certificate from Shabby Fabrics. And I bought the Strawberry Honey by Riley Blake. And there's some just really fun fabrics in this charm pack. Strawberries and bees and flowers, little bears, cross stitches. I also bought some yardage, so here's one of the fabrics. And this is by Gracie Larson. I don't know if you've ever followed her. She has some really, really cute patterns, and they're all uh, traditional pieced, but just adorable patterns. Gracie Larson. And these are her fabrics. And then there's a panel. And I was thinking um, project bags with the panel. So, oh, got it upside down. Just very cute, cute, cute fabrics. This is the other side of the panel. And then I'm always looking for some tone on tone fabric in the white, as far as white goes. And Shabby Fabrics had this white, and I don't know that you're going to be able to really tell, but it has this tiny little bee print on there. I don't know if it'll show up or not. But um, if I hold it back a little bit, you might be able to see it. But it's adorable. I just love the tiny bees on there. So that was from Shabby Fabrics. And on my birthday weekend, we went down to a uh, craft gallery and that's when I dropped off my uh, Mighty Acorn to be framed. And I also picked up some Weeks Dye Works threads. Um, these are threads that are used in projects for Winds of, Winds of Autumn. And the main one that I'm thinking of is this Autumn Sound. So a lot of these threads that I just showed you would be for this project. I forgot to share one thing in my plan, so let me back up and share that real quick with you. Jeanette with Crafty Cottage Stitches shared this pattern um, on their last floss tube and it's um, this Bare Roots pattern that has all these pillows. And I had bought this pattern when I was traveling with my job uh, a while back and I was in Wichita, Kansas and went to a quilt shop there and they had this pattern and they also had a kit to do this little pillow. And so when Jeanette showed it the other day, I started um, instant messaging her and said, hey, I have that. Do you want to start it? And she's like, yeah, which one do you want to do? And I was like, well, I have the kit for the flag. And so I did get it put together. I've got the flag uh, put together and I've got my embroidery ready to be stitched. So that is something else I started for the Star Spangle Social. So um, be sure to join in on that. It looks like fun. And I bought something else today when I was thinking of that too. All right, let's see. So birthday, um, we also got to go to Jeffrey's, which is an antique mall in Finley, Ohio, and it is fabulous. And I found some neat treasures there. I found this really neat button. And I've seen people use that on their finishes, like the pillows, and run a really pretty piece of ribbon through it. And I thought that button was really, really pretty. Look at the cost of it. It was 10 cents initially. I didn't pay 10 cents this time, but just kind of interesting. And then I also got some more trim, rickrack, and some of the um, 
rayon seam tape. Just really pretty colors. More Rick Rack. And then some fabric. Found a little back quarter that I thought was pretty. And found these napkins. These napkins wound up being, I think, maybe a dollar each. Yeah, they were a dollar each. I couldn't buy the fabric and make napkins for that. So I just thought that was really, really fun. I also got in the color and cotton. Uh, I told y'all last time I needed some more of my Carolina blue. So I bought what uh, keepsakes down in Cincinnati had left because this color is no longer going to be available. So um, I went ahead and bought the other skeins they had to finish that piece. All right, let's see what else. Um, recently, I was able to go on a little shop hop with a friend of mine here in White House. We went um, on a little shop hop and found this cute little pattern. And it's a wool. And I already have another snowman that he's looking up and he's got a little red bird on his hat looking down at him. So these will be... This will be a companion to that one. And this is All Through the Night by Bonnie Sullivan. And sometimes you can buy these as kits. And then um, sometimes you just buy the pattern. And I also got a piece of, of, of real pretty wool. And some primitive gathering. Just some wool squares that are in the Christmas colors. Um... Recently got some more fabric in. This is Picture This Plus Wren. Um, this particular fabric is used a lot in the Winds of Autumn book. So I thought it was a good purchase because um, I could use, use it. And it's 40 count. I don't think I've stitched on 40 count yet. So it'll be interesting. And then this is a piece of Luminous Fiber Arts. Uh, this is also um, a 40 count. This is Sparrow. So I was able to get a piece of that. All right. So let's see what else I wanted to share with you. These are a couple of, I forgot to share earlier. I'm kind of discombobulated, I guess, but these are a couple of wool applique pieces that I have been working on. And these are my own designs and they're called flower picks. So I put them on a flower pick. And I'm working on a pattern for these. So it's decided to storm here, so I'm getting thunder. All right. So let's see if I've got everything I wanted to show you. So I went to a state sale today and was able, my main reason for going was to find another milk glass and I did and that was exciting to be able to get that and then they had a box of Rick Rack and a box and a bag of zippers. Um, the Rick Rack box which was quite large had a lot of Rick Rack, had a lot of um, binding tape, the rayon and zippers and for five dollars I was able to get this plus it had a rotary cutting blade the size of the rotary cutter that I have. So that alone, you couldn't buy for $5. So anyway, this was a really good find. So I encourage you, if you feel like you feel safe enough to go to a estate sale in your area, that you can really find some great deals. And then after the estate sale, I was in the Elmore area and I went to their downtown and they were having a Mother's Day shop hop and there is a quilt shop there and I found some precious fabric for my hexagon quilt that I'm making that's an I spy quilt and so I'll show you um, this is the I spy quilt that I'm working on it is a pre-printed fabric that has the hexagons already on it I'll show you a blank spot of it so that's a blank spot of it and then I am hand appliquing I spy hexagons to the in the hexagon centers and making an I spy quilt. 
So I have a yard of this fabric. This is all, this one big piece is a yard. And so the fabric that I found today was fabulous. So it's going to be, um, I bought a half yard because I thought it would make a great project bag as well. But there's some great motifs in here. I mean, we're talking an owl, um, a stork, a camel. Um, I don't think I have some of these things in my I Spy already. A little coon. I mean, this is just wonderful. And it's called woodland, although you don't think of a camel in woodland. So it's just kind of interesting that they called it that. But anyway, fabulous piece of fabric. Um, and I love that it was on the dark background. That's one of the fabrics that I had a hard time finding um, for my I Spy was um, to intersperse some of them that had the dark background in with all the light. And then they also had, in that same fabric line, they had the sea creatures, which this is called... Dear Stella is the fabric company. Um, so it has all these sea creatures. This might be upside down. I don't know if it's directional. Kind of looks like it is because there's a flower in there. I see lily pad and turtles and fish and shells and starfish and crabs and what a great piece of fabric it would make a great project bag as well and then they have fat quarters um, on sale and I found this piece that I thought was so pretty and would be a, a great project bag front at least isn't that pretty that would be pretty for a project bag or finishing of some sort and then um, just some basic white again, just for piecing quilt blocks. Uh, a great green with a little dot. And then this orange, cute little orange fabric. So those are the fabrics I've found there. And this place is, this is for my Ohio people that are watching, this is Perfectly Pink Quilt Studio, Quilt Shop, Quilt Studio. And she also has a long arm that she can do long arming for you. Uh, also, I got there, this is called Liberty, and this would be perfect for the Star Spangled Social. It's a table runner. I just love that. Very cute. She had some zippers. I love these little lace zippers. And then as a gift with purchase, she gave us a choice of a color of a project bag. So, very cute. And my iron died this week, and she had the same iron, so I went ahead and got another one. So, last thing I want to show you. These are some pictures. Save the stitches, cross stitches, that Louise was able to get for me at an estate sale in Alabama. So, there's one. A little cottage. I love the bright colors and I believe it's stamped cross stitch. Open, you will find the gate, is what that one says. And then this one, there's no place like home. Sorry for the glare. So those are my treasures for this week and my haul and thank you for indulging me. It was a little more than usual because of my birthday and just I've had some opportunity to shop with some friends and uh, it's, it's been a, a good birthday month and thank you for your well wishes and your birthday wishes on my last blessed tooth. The recipe I'm going to share with you is um, called Salt River Bars and it's a sweet and I will insert a picture here and also put a link to the recipe. It would be fun to take on a picnic or to bring to a summer gathering. And I think you'll really enjoy them. 
And then I want to leave you with a word of encouragement. And from me sharing about my friend Janet passing away this week, this was the verse that came to mind. And I, I hope it will encourage you. And uh, I'll read it now. It's Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Thank you, Lord, for being so near to us, even in our time of grief. And I'm so thankful that Janet knew the Lord, and I'll get to see her again one day. And this being Mother's Day weekend, I know it's not always an easy uh, day for some folks for various reasons. Um, but if you're a mom, I pray you have a great day. If you're missing your mom, I pray that you will be flooded with memories of, of great times. And um, I hope you have a great weekend. And I hope the sun is shining and you get to get out and do some things. And if not, you have a stitchy project you can pick up and enjoy. Thank you for watching. Take care and I'll see you again soon. Bye.